What is up everyone? So, the chassis is ready, the gearbox is mounted, and the only missing part is the engine. Yes, and I've got the engine. I even started it a few months ago. And when that happened, I was like, yes, we've got a working engine. Good news, right? Yeah, but <laughs> I forgot to do one thing. There is that so-called end play, and it's a movement of the crankshaft. And when it's too big, the engine needs a total overhaul. And I don't want to do that because I don't know how. <laughs> okay, so we have to check it. So let's do it. This is the engine, 1.2 liter. I took it out, out of that black beetle over there. A bit dusty and rusty, but that's okay. So now we need to turn it around and we will check how big is that end play. So let's do it like that. There we go. We still have the clutch mounted, so we need to take it off. Let's do that. First, we need to mount that flywheel lock. Just like that. is officially gone okay and now i will show you what i'm talking about this is that end play i don't know if you can see that of course you can see you can even hear it so we need to measure that distance and i have a tool for that i bought it a long time ago but i have never opened it so this is the first time that I'm seeing it. The first part, this is the gauge. And this is the rest. Now we have to figure how it works. So let's do that. Okay, so there is a magnet inside of that. And now it's on off. <laughs> so it won't stick to the flywheel. But if we turn it on, it should stick. So let's see. Boom, there we go, okay. And now we have that gauge. It has that plunger over here. And when you press it, the needle goes crazy. <laughs> so one full turn of the needle is one millimeter. And we don't want that. Of course, there is a limit of that end play. And I think it's about 15 tau. So we shouldn't have more than that if we have 25 like that this is the maximum everything over that means that the engine needs an overhaul so uh, let's hope that we won't go <laughs> over that so now we have to install it here somehow okay i think that we got it now we have to set it to zero and you do that by Turning that. Okay, we got more or less zero. Now we need to push the flywheel and pray, guys. <laughs> Holy crap! This is insane. So it's correct, guys. It's correct. Holy crap, guys. I was 100% sure that that engine is trash like i said earlier i bought that measuring tool a long time ago it's i don't know around two years now and i was scared to check that end plate uh, to this day and now i feel relieved and that's good because i couldn't sleep at night because i thought that we have a huge problem because total overhaul of the engine would consume a ton of money money that i don't have so <laughs> yes so guys it looks like we won't have to disassemble it and try to figure how to fix it we will disassemble it partially because there are a few things that i want to fix uh, but mostly 
we will make it look beautiful. So that's the mission for now. Okay guys, we've got the first problem because I wanted to mount that on that engine stand that I got from my girl last year, but I didn't know that that mount over here doesn't go along with this engine. Of course, I could remodel that, but I don't want to destroy that piece. So the only option would be welding a new mount. And by that, I mean this whole thing. And there is a problem because I don't have the materials to do that. And I don't have time in this episode. So we will abandon this idea and we will take it apart over here. As you can see, I moved that whole barrel over here. So we will do what we can. And probably in the next video, I will try to mount that over there. Fingers crossed. <laughs> okay, so let's start from the spark plug wires. This is the easiest mission over here. Okay, gone. Now the fuel line from the carburetor. Oh, there we go. Okay, and now the carburetor, only two nuts. One is over here, the other one is over there, but we have an easy access, so it shouldn't be that hard, actually. Okay, now that. And it should come off. Boom, just like that. We will have to take it apart and probably replace half of it. And of course, we will try to make it look better than now, but that's later. Now the alternator stand or bracket, only four nuts to undo. This should be very quick. There we go. Okay, and now the intake manifold, two nuts over here, two bolts over here, and the same thing on this side. Two bolts, two nuts. This should come off easily or not. Okay. Okay, I tried and it doesn't want to come off because this is in the way. So first let's undo that. It looks like this should come off. Look at that guys, a few minutes and half of the engine is gone. And I found a first issue because this is the oil cooler. And as you can see, it's wet down here, here and over here. So it's leaking oil, obviously. And I believe that between that and the engine block, there are two O-rings that we will have to replace. I took a break because I couldn't help myself and I built that engine mount. It looks very bizarre because I didn't measure anything. Everything is eyeballed, but it works. <laughs> okay, a bit crooked, but we've got the engine in the air. And now check this out, guys. Look at that. I know it looks bad, but it works. And it only took me about 20 minutes to do it. And this is how it looks from this side. And what I did here is very simple. I looked in the internet how the original engine mounts for these engines look and I tried to copy it. And I did that because I wanted to have an access to the flywheel because after we will put that engine together, we will start it. So I have that piece of the gearbox. We will mount it over here. We will mount the starter and just like that, we will be able to start the engine on the engine stand. Boom. And besides that, now we are able to rotate it 
and trust me guys we will need that for sure okay back to work so now i think that we will remove the rest of the tin so this thing this right here and there are two parts under the engine and we have a few in the front but we will be able to remove them after we will remove that so let's start from this one Okay, and now the exhaust and this right here. We've got fresh oil on it, so that's not good. Look at that, it's wet and rusted, so that's not good either, damn it. This is the other one, a bit better, but it's in a rough condition. And that's funny because I thought that all of the tins on that engine are good looking, but nope, holy crap. Okay guys, there is only one part of the tin left right here, but in order to take this off, we need to take off the crank pulley so now we will undo it with that of course the flywheel is locked once again then we will use that tool to take it off and we will take off that Okay, all of the tin is gone, so now I think that we will drain the oil, so we need to undo that. One, two, three, four, five, six bolts. Look at that, guys. This is all of the oil out of that engine, and it looks like we are missing about half of it. So that means that that engine is leaking oil from everywhere. So, of course, we will have to find those leaks and fix them. Okay, so now it's time for the flywheel. This is already loosened. I did it before I mounted it to that engine mount. So now this should come off easily, I think. There we go. Oh, oh wow, this is heavy. Okay, and I think that we've got the first issue. I think that that seal is not sealing anymore and it was leaking oil from here. Look at that, everything is wet over here, so we will have to replace that. Okay guys, we already know that we have a leak from this seal, from under the oil cooler, and now look what I found. Ta-da! Three out of four push rod tubes are bent, and I don't think that I did that because I always had these installed, and they are protecting these, so I assume that I bought it like that, and the only thing that I did to that engine was uh, take off the accessories and the tins and the parts that are visible in the engine compartment were sandblasted and powder coated and the rest was left like that. So I guess that back then I didn't pay enough attention and even if I saw that I just left it. So you probably know that we will have to take off the heads from both sides and of course replace all of these four on this side and four on the other side and i think that they are probably leaking oil as well guys i just found another issue because look at that there is a chunk of aluminum missing and that's not good because this holds that metal springy thing and that metal springy thing holds the valve cover so without that it won't work so that's a bummer and we, we will have to find a way to fix that of course it should look like that but it looks 
like that that's not good okay guys so we know that we have to take off the head so let's start from this side i think that first we should take off that cover boom just like that there we go hello okay now we have to undo two nuts over here to take off the rockers Now this should come off easily. Boom, there we go. Okay, now let's see if the push rods are straight. Okay, it looks like it's not bent, so that's good because we won't have to replace that. But we have to remember that they have to land in the same place. So I will keep them in the correct order. The second one is straight as well. Okay, the third one, looks straight as well but look at that that tube was bent enough that it was touching it so that's not good but it looks straight so it's okay and the last one is straight as well okay guys now we only have to undo eight nuts and the head should come off i think <laughs> so let's do that As you can see, the nut didn't come loose, so I got out the whole stuff. And I think that we will have the same situation in all of these up here. Okay, I was wrong. Only two studs came out. The rest of the nuts came loose very easily. But I think that we will replace all of the studs because they are rusty, old and why not right and guys this is exciting because i have never ever been that deep into any engine so i'm a bit stressed and now we can take off the head so let's do that okay guys this is it i think that this should come off really easy now so there we go okay we got it Woohoo! Hello, this is how it looks inside. I think that we will clean all of that for sure. And now the cylinders, of course, they are rusty, but look inside of it. The surface is nice and smooth, no scratches at all. So that's good. I hope that the rest of them will look exactly the same as this one. Okay, one side done. And now we have to do the same thing over here, but there is one difference here because under that head, there is a thermostat mounted right here. And that metal piece over here goes through that head. And to take it out, we need to undo that one nut over here. Boom, that was easy. Just like that. All of it should come down and we have to do that. As you can see, that metal piece has a thread and it goes inside here, just like that. Guys, the rest of it is exactly the same. So let's do the magic. Done. Okay, guys, when I was doing that, I was thinking if anybody was inside that engine ever. And the answer came to me very quickly because the washer on that stud was a lot thinner than on the other studs. So that means that somebody was messing around with that side of the engine. And now look at that. We have oil in both pistons. And I was thinking, what the hell, how this happened? And now I know, because when I was draining the oil, I left that engine a bit tilted to that side. And that is why we have oil in those cylinders and I think that this happened because of the rings that are on the pistons and they are not doing their job anymore I think of course I forgot to do one thing <laughs> that I should do in the beginning of that video I forgot to check the compression in all four cylinders but I guess that we will replace all of the rings on the pistons anyway 
here we have the parts from the other side luckily all of the push rods are straight and this is the other head and guys in the next episode we will look for the cracks or anything that looks suspicious and there is another mission because we have to find a way to clean both of these because i am not mounting that back onto that engine holy crap there is no going back now guys i am very happy that this engine will leave but i'm scared at the same time because i don't know what i'm doing but trust me in a few weeks it will look better than ever i have to do some thinking because we have to clean all of that somehow and it's not going to be that easy as it was with the gearbox so we have a mission and besides that i have to start looking for new parts guys that episode was very exciting for me <laughs> and the next one will be even more so stay tuned and remember your project won't finish itself thank you for today like comment and subscribe and see you very shortly